There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we outlined the construction of a galvanic cell, so what parts had to be present to make a galvanic cell. We also traced the electron flow, and we said that the electrons always flow from the anode to the cathode. In this video, we're going to cover the different terms that we mentioned in the last couple of videos, because the dot point itself says, define the terms anode, cathode, electrode, and electrolyte to describe galvanic cells. So we have to actually be able to know what their definition is for these different terms. And we'll start with the actual big word, the galvanic cell, what the definition for the galvanic cell was. And then we'll cover the other words afterwards. So galvanic cell was a combination of electrodes and ele so electrodes and electrolytes that cause the flow of electrons. So the whole thing itself was the, the galvanic cell. We had our electrodes, which were, uh, in this case, our zinc and our copper electrode, and our electrolytes, which was that solution. That plus the salt bridge, all of that combined, and the wires, all of that combined, is a galvanic cell because it causes the flow of electrons. So because of this whole circuit, we've got the wire and then can, the electrons can flow. And we've got the salts, which can replace the lost ions. All that together is our galvanic cell because it allows actual electricity. So a flow of electricity or of electrons to happen, which is why we call this whole topic electrochemistry, because we can use chemistry or chemicals or compounds to cause the flow of electricity. So that was a galvanic cell. The galvanic cell was just the electrodes and the electrolytes and how they combine to make the flow of electrons, so the flow of electricity happen. Now we'll cover the next term, which was the anode. So the anode. So the anode is the electrode. Where, so first, actually, before we go into the anode, I'll cover the word electrode. So the electrode was a met metallic conducting plates of galvanic cells. So in this case, we've got two conducting plates. We've got the zinc and the copper electrodes, or the anode and the cathode. And what they do is these two plates allow electricity to flow. They're the conducting ones. Without these two plates, nothing would happen. Right? So we have the electrode was just these two different plates. But then we have different names for each type of plate. So we have the, the anode, which is the one I mentioned earlier. We're going to talk about the anode. And um, so the anode is where the electrode, where the oxidation occurs. And remember, oxidation was the loss of electrons. So if you remember from one of the earlier animations that, that I've done, um, you would have your electrons, they might be lost here. And then they travel all the way up through this wire. And then they go all the way to the cathode. So the anode is where oxidation occurs, and oxidation is the loss of electrons. So you always have your electrons being lost at the anode and, and moving to the cathode. So with the cathode would be the opposite. So that's the electrode where reduction occurs. And remember, reduction is just the gain of electrons. Gain of electrons. So here we've gained these electrons. Electrons from the anode have traveled through this wire and they have meet, met at the cathode. So the cathode has gained these electrons. So we still need to also be able to um, describe the term electrolyte or the electrolyte solution. So what electrolyte is, is it substances that release ions when in solution and carries electrical current. So we've got, um, this is solution here, we've got our solution right here, solution. And we have solution on the other side as well. And with the solution, you have, um, we, the example we used was zinc sulfate. So zinc sulfate, I'll write zinc sulfate. This is actually a, like a salt. So this could be solid, right? But once we put it into... Once we put it into solution, this will break apart, the zinc and the sulfate. And then we have those gray ones, which are going to be the zinc ions and the sulfate ions. Because they're aqueous, so they're dissolved in solution, and they swim around. 
So it's act electrolyte, it needs to be something that dissolves when we put it into solution. And sink sulfate, which is the example we used, does that. And it needs to be able to carry the electrical current. So without this electrolyte, we would have no electrical current passing through. So we, need, we don't need to only have the electro electrodes, which are the anode and cathode, we also need to have this electrolyte. So in this case, we have zinc, we have the zinc sulfate for the zinc, um, half, this is called a half cell. So we've got one half cell here and one half cell here. For the zinc half cell, we have zinc sulfate, and for the copper half cell, we have copper sulfate. And when it comes to how you would write this whole thing, you need to be able to know this kind of um, way of terminology of, of writing it. So we have this here is our half cell. This refers to our half cell, or the split between the two half cells. So this is here, all these, these the zinc and the zinc sulfate for this part refers to um, the half cell for the zinc one, and the other part, the other half, is the half cell for the copper, and the copper sulfate. So we've got zinc, which is solid, which refers to the ones on the actual electrode. And then there's a dash in between. And then we have zinc sulfate, that zinc, in this case, refers to the iron, zinc iron. And that sulfate refers to the sulfate iron. And then we've got two dashes. These two dashes means that we go to the other half cell. So whatever is on the opposite side is of the other half cell. We've got copper solid. So the solid copper is the stuff or the atoms on the actual electrode, on the cathode. And we've got copper sulfate. So the copper sulfate, the copper part, refers to the copper iron. And the sulfate part refers to the sulfate iron. So this is how I would actually write. So when you have a galvanic cell, you need to be able to know this notation. You write your sink solid, which is the electro part. Then you have one dash. Then you write the electro electrolyte, which is this part. This is the electrolyte, sink sulfate. And you have two dashes to refer to a change in in um, the half cell you're talking about. Then you have copper, which is the electrode of the other half cell. And then you have copper sulfate, which is the electrode or electrolyte of the other half cell. Okay. So the final term is anode. Anode is the electrode where oxidation occurs or where the loss of electrons occurs. Cathode is the electrode where reduction occurs, where the gain of electrons occurs. We had our electrolyte which was the substances that release ions when in solution. So for example, zinc sulfate might be solid, but once we put it in solution, it dissolves into its ions, into separate units. And it also has to carry an electrical current. And the galvanic cell was all of this together. So it was the electrodes and the electrolytes, the salt bridge and the wires. And all of this together was important because it helped the flow of electricity going from the anode to the cathode. And we usually also had our voltmeter to measure that flow as well. And you know this notation as well, which is quite useful. But yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.